Leaders at the G20 summit in Delhi have issued a joint declaration despite wide differences over the war in Ukraine. Unlike last year's Bali communique, this year's document does not mention Russia by name. The African Union also joined the G20 club and key pledges for battling climate change were made. It was the success India wanted for its G20 presidency. I announced the adoption of the declaration. World leaders meeting in Delhi defied expectations to issue a joint declaration, but the text on the war in Ukraine fell short of condemning Russia's aggression. Instead, it called on states to refrain from threatening or using force to gain territory. Still, the German chancellor called the communique a success. It is important that once again we have found words to make it clear that the territorial integrity of a state like Ukraine cannot simply be challenged with violence from its neighbor. But concessions had to be made. The text also included Russia's demand for an easing of sanctions. Other points include ideas for curbing climate change, combating poverty and debt relief for developing countries. None of them, however, are binding. Another success of the summit, the African Union will become a member of the G20 club, which will then represent about 90 per cent of the world's population. It's an important signal of uh, inclusivity, and we need to bring the African continent together with the, the EU in order to address uh, all the creative challenges. India came out the winner from this gathering. Its international weight likely to increase further once the summit is over. Let's dig deeper with DW's uh, Delhi Bureau Chief Amrita Chima, who joins us now from Delhi on the final day of the summit. Uh, we just heard in the report that India came out as a winner from that gathering. Did it really? Well, India certainly thinks that it came out as a winner. You know, it is a rotating presidency of the G20, but India took it to a different level altogether. You know, over the past year, about 100,000 delegates from 125 countries went to various G20 events in 60 Indian cities. So that was a great opportunity for India to showcase its economic potential and the opportunities that exist here. So some people are talking about the G20 dividend for India. But the fact also still remains that two key G20 leaders were not there, the leaders of China and Russia. And also in the past year, uh, India was not able to reconcile differences over Ukraine in all the ministerial meetings that it had. Amrita, the formal declaration was announced yesterday, a surprise to some, because that happened to be day one of the summit. To the extent that you can, take us behind the scenes and give us a sense of how things unfolded. Michael, when the announcement was made in this building right behind me, there was a sense of euphoria and relief because a stage had reached in the negotiations that people almost felt there would be no declaration at the end of the summit. So that was, as you said, a big surprise. And, you know, the Sherpa who was chairing the meeting said it went down to the wire, the Indian Sherpa. And he said he had 200 meetings only on the issue of Ukraine. And in the end, he was going to individual negotiators or Sherpas of each of the uh, delegations to say we must come to a compromise. And mm. finally, a compromise did come. But as we heard, in the report, it came at a cost. Many people feel the new Delhi declaration is much weaker in terms of not mentioning Russia and directly uh, about its aggression in Ukraine. But that was then the price for the consensus. The African Union is now part of the G20, which traditionally consists of the world's richest countries. What changed in the G20 under India's presidency? Precisely that, Michael, what changes that the G20 was always viewed as a grouping of rich countries. But in India's presidency, the focus appears to have shifted to the emerging world. That was one of the big key agendas of India's G20 presidency. 
the example of the African Union being inducted is a, a very good example because it now represents 55 countries from the African continent. And also in terms of the agenda, there were about 79 outcomes in the declaration, the New Delhi Declaration, which focus on concerns uh, for the emerging countries, be it financial inclusion, debt reduction, climate finance, and so on. So it is very much a focus on the developing world, and many see this actually as a watershed moment in the history of the G20. Hmm. Many thanks as always. Uh, DW's Delhi Bureau Chief Amrita Chima.